Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 195, 3D Modeling for Computer Animation for the Fall Semester 2021. Um, there are a few more tools that I wanted to show you today before we get into um, more advanced surfacing techniques. Um, so let me show you those. Some of them are kind of fun. Um, you may or may not need them. Um, but when you do, they're nice to have. So the first one that I'd like to show you today is um, for the rail bevel or rail extrude, I'm sorry. And that too can be found under the multiply tab, something that I forgot to tell you about. Rail extrude right here. Now to use the rail extrude, it's similar to some of the Boolean features that we were covering you need um, two objects, two different layers, one in the foreground, one in the background. As you can see in the foreground here, I have a disk. Okay. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that I have a disk, two-dimensional disk. And it may be hard for you to see on the screen, but I have a path that kind of wa a wavy path goes through um, space that's just a linear kind of stroke. Now, show you how I created that. Since we really haven't talked about it that much, I'll go to a brand new layer over here. And um, under create the Create tab at the bottom, there are a variety of tools that you can use for curves. And the one that I used was Sketch right here. And to do that from the top view, I just clicked and I dragged like so. And you can see that when I release it, it's just a linear path. <clears throat> and um, it automatically, every time I kind of move the mouse a little bit, um, adds a node to that. And then when you're done, you can come back with the selecting points. And then the tool that I would like to use for this that I also that I haven't talked about would be under modify. It's the drag tool. Um, we've used the move tool an awful lot, but the drag tool can be useful from time to time in that <clears throat> if you wish to move points um, and you don't want to have to select and unselect points, all you have to do is move over a point like so, and click on it and drag. Now, see, I wasn't right on the point, but once I was, let me do that again. I'm gonna select drag. There we go. Click on it and move it up. There we go. So I can move it up and over, and I can take this one and I can move it down. And you can see in space, I have this three-dimensional path, this wavy line. So that's how I created that. So I'll turn off drag, <clears throat> excuse me. And then perpendicular to that, I just simply created a disc. So I have the path and I'm gonna put that in the background in a minute. Let's go ahead and select the disc. And as I said, hold down the shift key, put the path in the background. And you can see that I've aligned the disc to that path. And now what I'll do under the multiply tab here is I'll select path extrude. And it's useful for creating um, tubes of some sort, or you know, that could be phone lines, or it could be electrical lines, or it could be garden hoses, or any number of things that um, you know you don't want a straight path, but something that it just you know waves around through space. And so what I'll do is I'll select rail extrude. The rail extrude pops up. I'm just gonna use, you, you have a choice of the segments. You can make sure that it's, that they are uniform, automatic, or you want uniform knots. I'm just gonna leave it automatic so you can see what, how it um, finishes up. And I do want this oriented to the path. So it's best when you start off that it is perpendicular. The disc is perpendicular to the starting point where you get started. So align to start, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna just click okay. 
And you can see, it's pretty cool, that if I go ahead here and I um, show this just in perspective view, that I can come back here and you can see that, that I have a nice kind of gnarly um, tube that I created, three-dimensional tube, starting with a simple, <clears throat> you know, linear path and a two-dimensional um, uh, disc. Now, the two-dimensional shape doesn't have to be round. It can be a star shape. It can be a hexagon. It can be a square. It can be whatever you want, as long as it's two-dimensional flat plane. It can be, uh, you know, an end on of any, any sort, and then it extrudes it along the path. So that was one of the first ones that I wanted to show you. Another one that's kind of cool. And so I'm gonna, again, gonna start a brand new layer here. Come on, there we go. Is I'm gonna start with maybe a sphere, a ball. So let's go to create. And it's, this is called the spiky tool. Um, it doesn't have to be a ball, but what it does is it will take quads and it will, um, break them up into four, um, it will kind of, in a way it'll kind of triple it. It will create um, uh, four three-pointed um, polys um, and then it creates a spiky look to it. And when, you know, have I ever needed it? No, not really, but it's still, it's kind of cool. And you, you know, for your project, um, your toy <clears throat> or for your, um, you know, something, a part of your final project, maybe it would be something that you might want to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset and activate. So I have my sphere and I'm gonna hit A to set it up. <clears throat> so there's my sphere. Now let's go to multiply. And then um, right beneath where it says um, thicken and extender plus, if you look at more, there should be a spiky tool and that's down here. And when I do that and I activate, watch what happens. And now watch what happens. Now that's the spike factor. When I increase this, notice how it takes that, each of those quads and it breaks it up and makes it, you know, into this spiky look. You know, when would you need it? I don't know. I can't think of a time. I don't know that I've ever really needed it. But again, that's another kind of fun tool. It, it's important for you guys when you have some extra time to explore some of these to see what they do. Okay. So there's one more that I want to show you. Um, and I'm going to select another layer for that. Um, when would you need it? I don't know. But this is called the seashell tool. Um, again, I've never really needed it, but it, it's similar to lathe. So what you want to do is you want to start with a disc or, again, a two-dimensional shape. So I'm going to use the disc. And I'm going to click like so, maybe from the front view. And I'm going to make sure that, it's, that they're the same. I'll make sure that they're 100 millimeters. Why 100? I don't know, because that was the size that I made it just by <clears throat> accident. And now we come back over to multiply. And again, under more, if you look down here, there's a seashell tool. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to take and I want to reset and I want to activate. Now let's see if it does it. Come on, activate. Uh, why aren't you doing that? There we go. So I'm clicking and dragging in here from the top view. And actually what I need to do is move it out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click this off. I told you I don't use that that often. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this, the seashell tool off and I'm gonna undo. But I'm gonna move it over from the center. So I'll hit T for move and let's move it over like so, just so it's slightly off center. And now let's try that again. 
let's go ahead and turn off move and let's go to more and let's go to the seashell tool. Let's go ahead and activate. And again, we have all these different settings that we can do. do we want it along the Y axis. How about the X axis? Okay. How about the Z axis? I'm going to do it along the Y. Okay. I like that. But <clears throat> scale per loop, that's not bad. Maybe make it 0.5. Um, shift per loop. Um, I have, I want 20 sides per loop, number of sides. Actually, you know what? I don't want that. Um, let's zoom out just a little bit. But that's where you can kind of get a little corkscrew feel for it. Um, let's go ahead and let's, let me switch back to X and see what we have here. Um, you know what? I'm going to do that again. I'm going to put it, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And I don't want to labor this too much, but it is kind of fun. And I'm going to put it in the center again. So I'm going to go ahead and put FN, F2. And that centers it. And let's try it again. But instead of having it lay the cross the Y, I'm going to have it lay the cross. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll just see. I don't know. I have to play with it. And that's what I encourage all of you guys to do, just play with it. So let's try again, try the seashell. And I'm going to reset and activate. And let's try again. And now this is along the Y. So let's try along the X and see what happens. Let's try along the Z. No, you know what? Um, I'm kind of making a mess of this thing. Let's try the Y again. And I have four loops, sides per loop. Let's change, let's play with um, some other factors here for, real quick. So scale, by changing that, notice the, the shapes that I'm getting. Now that's 1.3. Shift, if I shift this over and play with a shift, Notice what we're getting here. It's sort of a, you know, of a, let me make this instead of textured wire, just wired, textured. And you can see the shape that we're getting here. So you can, you know, with a number of these tools, you can get some really interesting shapes. Let me go back to X and see what we get. Okay. And I'm going to change that. Now let's see what we get in here. No, nope, I need to stretch that out a little bit. So that's starting to look like a seashell. Um, let's do three or two loops, number of loops. And when I zoom in here, uh, again, you can see some kind of, you know, different strange um, shapes that we're getting here. Okay. The goal is to make it, in this particular instance, look like a, a seashell. And I'm not being very successful at that. Okay. But that's, um, again, for some organic shapes that maybe you want to explore. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Um, that was under more, and I go to the turn off seashell. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the tab key <clears throat> and see what we get here. No, because it, ex it exceeds. Yeah, there you go. No, it sort of looks like a seashell, but not really. Because I have that shape. Kind of cool. Anyway, those are just a couple of extra ones that I wanted to show you. I'm going to go back to these. And what I want to show you now is we're going to leave 
modeling alone, and we're going to work on surfacing today. So to show you how I want to surface this is I'm just going to start with a basic cube. And then I'm going to take you over to Photoshop and show you um, uh, a, a, a two-dimensional image that I made of a window. And all of the, the um, images, subsequent images that I had to make to um, be able to make masks for those. Because what I want to show you how to do is that um, we can make bump, what are called bump maps that will take the surface normals and make them look um, inset or, uh, or an appearance of extruded. We can also create transparent maps where you can actually poke holes through surfaces using map mapping techniques. Um, we can also have reflective maps so that just parts of the image are very reflective um, in a variety of things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a simple cube and I'm gonna take the image of a window and then we're gonna take the window panes and make them transparent. We're gonna take the window frame and we're going to make it um, extrude. And maybe the window panes, we will ripple them a little bit and we'll also make them um, uh, reflective. So you can actually see um, you know, an exterior, if you wish, um, an artificial exterior that maybe doesn't really exist. So I'm gonna start with um, the Create tab and I'll work with a box. So I'm gonna go ahead and just simply reset and activate. So there we go. That's all I want. Six-sided cube, nothing more, nothing less. So I'll zoom out just a little bit and we're gonna look at it in 3D, okay? Now what I wanna do is I want to create <clears throat> A surface for this. So I'm going to hit Q and I don't want it to be a default surface, but I'll just name it um, box. Okay. And I'm going to make it um, kind of a brownish color and you'll see why in a little bit. Because one of the surface, the surface textures that I want to apply is going to be an image of um, wood. So it's going to look like kind of a the start of what you would might get if you wanted to make kind of a log cabin or something. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the front plane. So I need to switch from. I want to make sure I use center of selection. I'm going to select polygon instead of points, and I'm going to select this front plane here. Now I'm going to hit Q, and I'm going to name it window, because this is where I'm going to place my window. If I wanted it on all sides, I could do that. Um, and I'm going to make it a different color just to show you what we're doing here. So I'll make it green because you're not going to see the green in the end. And I'll click OK. And I'll click OK. And there we go. So um, one other thing that I want to do um, is I'm going to put a, a sphere inside this um, because um, when I create the transparent maps, I want you to be able to kind of prove to the, you that you can actually see through it and see what's inside this. So let's go ahead and, and make a sphere. I'll make a ball inside this. Um, so, like so. And um, let's go ahead and uh, make sure that I have it. I'll make it 400 millimeters. So I'm just using the numeric requester to make sure that it's a perfect sphere. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit Q and I want it to be ball. And I'll make it a nice bright red ball. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now what I want to do is I need to save the object and we're going to send it over to layout. Um, so let me do that first. I'm going to go to get file, save as. 
and I make sure that it's not in images. I want it in objects. There we go. And make sure that it's in the correct one for first demo. Yeah, okay, so it's right. Okay, so I'll name it um, window demo. Just keep things organized here. Okay, so it's saved in my objects. And I already have layout open, so I'll go ahead and I'm going to sync. Make sure that it's synchronized with layout, and I'll go ahead and I'll send it over to layout. And there we go. So now what I want to do is I want it not texture shaded, but let's look at it in VPR. Now I'm going to get rid of the, the gradient background. Um, I need to move it around. So normally I move the camera around, but in this particular instance, I think I'm going to move the object. So I'm going to take um, I have layer one. Let me hit Y for rotate. And um, instead of EPR, I'm going to look at it in wireframe so I can see the widget a little bit better. <clears throat> Actually, um, I should probably look at it instead of wireframe. I should look at it in um, shaded solid. There we go. I need to be able to see the front of my. There we go. So there's the front. And let's go ahead and tip it down. Nope, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera up now. So let's switch and select the camera. I'm going to hit T for move. And I'm going to move it up like so. And then I'm going to hit Y to rotate. And I'm going to move it down a little bit. OK, so here's my cube. And I need to start. What I want to do is I want to place an image <clears throat> of a window in here. And then I, what I want to do is I want to create transparencies so that you can see through the window, um, create bumps so that it looks like maybe the window pane is a little ripply. Um, and I also want to take the other parts of the cube and apply um, a wood surface to it so it looks like it's made of just that wood, okay, instead of a generic texture. Now, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch right here. I hope everybody can see this. If you can't, please let me know. This is, um, I'm in Photoshop right now. And I'm going to move over layers. And what I did is I created a very simple window with window panes. And I did that using, if you're not familiar with that, I used um, shape layers to do that. And then what I did, <clears throat> because we have to break this down into multiple parts to be able to use as a mask, what I did is I created a black and white version of this. So you can see that I have the window panes, OK? Um, that would be one mask that I would need. If I turned all of this off, I would also need a mask for the entire window frame. And then I would also want another one. I would need to take each one of these. Let's turn each of these back on. And I'm going to double click on each of these. And let's make them white. OK, so this would be another one. And once I've, I've created my Photoshop file, what I also need to do is I need to create my um, either JPEGs or Targa files, the TGA files that I can use um, for masking techniques. So let's double click again. I'll do this one more time. So now I have another black and white. And all of these were based on a single image to make sure that the, um, the size, the proportions, the placement are exactly identical to one another. OK, so I have one mask for the overall. I have one mask for the panes. And I have one mask for the frame itself. And then I have another image that I use to map and I, so that I'll have some color applied to it. Now, for this one, 
if I wanted <clears throat> the window frame to look like wood or another material, I could do that. Um, I'm just using just simple two-dimensional shapes. Something else to let you know why am I making the window panes blue? Because typically glass, even though it's transparent, isn't entirely um, without any color at all. It generally has a bluish tint to it, sometimes a greenish tint, can have a, a, a black or grayish tint to it. So these are all of the files that I've made. I start with a Photoshop file, and then I sit for the mask as well as this, I save them as JPEG files so that I can go in and I can now bring them inside <clears throat> um, Lightwave and apply my surfaces to them. So let me go ahead and I'm going to quit Photoshop because it's taking up memory here. And then we're going to go back to um, our object here and let's go ahead and bring up our surface editor and we're going to go ahead and i'm going to switch for the box or rather the eat the window and the box i'm going to switch from principled bsdf to um standard that will just work better for me for right now so let me go back in and i'm going to just so you can see what I'm doing here, I'm going to change the color. Let's make it kind of brown. <clears throat> and let's uh, actually, no, what do I do? I made that one green so we could distinguish it from the rest. Um, let me go ahead and do that so you can see what I'm doing here. There we go. Now let's go ahead and take the box and that's principled BSDF. And I also want to change that to the standard for right now. And I'll click on here. And I'll make this kind of a deep, uh, dark brown here. There we go. OK, so let's work with the window first. So I created the image of the window. <clears throat> and I want to apply that as a surface. And it, it's not by accident that I'm using a one meter cube. Because by default, the size of your surface textures um, are one scaled to one meter. So I'm going to go ahead and hit T for texture. And the kind of projection that I want is planar. Now, do I want it along the X, Y, or Z? I'm going to leave it the default Z and see if it works. And if not, then we'll see. I don't need it to repeat, so I'm going to change that. And I also use automatic sizing. And then once I've done that, I can use my layers to begin cutting holes for everything else. Okie doke. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to get start my getting my images. So I'm gonna go to image, load image. Come on, there we go. And it should go into my image folder where I saved all of these. And here we go. I have my window JPEG. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And it's solid shaded, so I need to make it VPR just so I can see this. OK. Now, it doesn't look like much. It's all white. So what I need to do is I need to use automatic sizing. I also need to go, I don't want it to repeat, so I'm going to reset. And I'm going to reset. Now, I have it along the Z axis, so maybe it needs to be along the X. So now I'm discovering everything needs to be along the X axis. Now, I have, um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Pixel blending. Here's my window JPEG. So let's go ahead and put in a background here. Now, I don't, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing the tan um, frame that I have here. So, um, but I am seeing the window pane. So I have image normal, that's good. Let me go ahead now <clears throat> and let's take this, this particular layer and I'm gonna copy it so that all the settings are identical for each of them. 
that for the masks that I apply. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select current layer, copy it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste. And I don't want to replace. I just want to add to the layer. Okay. And now what I want to do <clears throat> is I'm going to replace this one, the top one, with um, instead of a normal layer, I'm going to make it an alpha channel so I can see through. And you can see through the green. Now, for some reason, that window JPEG, um, I may have the wrong file here. So let me go back and see. I have window JPEG. Let me go ahead and load image again and see what I have. I thought for sure that was correct. Yeah, that should be the window. Let's um, let's look at this in um, uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to look at it in columns so that I can see kind of a preview of what I'm supposed to see here. Yeah, that's what I'm supposed to see. I have the tan. So I, I did select the correct one. So I've got that. So now let's go ahead and that's my alpha channel. And now let's go ahead and invert it and see if that doesn't work. Because what I need to do, now everything is bogging down for me. So hopefully this doesn't cause a problem today. Um, what I need to do is instead of for my um, my mask, what I need to do is I need to use the, the entire shape to mask it out. And I also need to um, invert it. So you'll see in a minute, I, instead of the window itself, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the window JPEG and load another image for the mask that's above the background. And I want it to be, um, let's see, I want not the window pane, I want, let's, there's the window, yeah, just the black rectangle is what I want. No, nope, that's window masks, window frame mask. How about this one? No. Nope. Um, No, nope, I don't want that one. I have a mistake here. So um, yeah, this is an important one. Let me go ahead and go back to Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the recording for a minute um, because I have a mistake here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. I'm recording. Yeah, so let me go ahead and make and remake all of these masks just to show you. So I need one for the, the background or the overall image. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to use a legacy format here. I'm going to export and I'm going to say save for web. Not that it has to, but you know, it can be a large file. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG and I'll name it um, in a minute. And I named the name it, I'll name it window mask, and then I'll have window frame. Yeah. So let me go back in. So here's my window masks. So I want um, it to be window mask JPEG. And make sure that that is saved. And I need to make sure it's in the right folder. So let's go to my desktop and let's go to content for this semester, content for 2021, and make sure it's in images. There we go. So I want it to be window mask JPEG. There we go. 
And now what I want, I'll turn this off. And I'm, I'm gonna make sure that the window panes are selected too. So I'll name it file, export. Save for web legacy. So um, this is gonna be um, window panes, mask. And again, it's um, uh, JPEG. And if JPEGs don't work, you can always switch later on to just save it as a TGA file, which is a target file. So I've got my window panes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and replace it since that's kind of good that I already had it. And now I want the window frame. So I'm gonna turn this back on and I'm gonna change each of these to white. So that I have the silhouette of the frame itself. So I'm selecting each layer Selecting white. <clears throat> and notice that I'm not changing the scale of anything. I'm not moving anything. That's really critical that each of these um, match one another perfectly. So I'm going to do an export for this one. Do the same thing. File. Um, I need to export web legacy. <clears throat> And I want this one to be um, window frame mask. So I have the entire frame. And hopefully it's the same name as the other. So I get that error message. <clears throat> and I do, I want to replace it. And I'm gonna go back to, and I'm gonna open up the other one and make sure that I have my, <clears throat> the image that I need. Um, so that I have, here we have a window here that works. And then I'll make sure that that's saved. So there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Web Legacy again. Um, export, save for web. And I just want this to be my window JPEG. Come on. Yeah, window JPEG, there we go. And again, it should replace the old one. So we go ahead and we'll replace it. See if there's anything that I missed from before. Now I can close all of this. Okay, so now I can go back to here. Let's come back to here. Let's turn this layer off. Okay. And I'm just gonna delete these. And we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna remove the layer. I'm gonna go back again. And I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna remove this layer. I can't do that. So let's go back here. <clears throat> and I don't want that to be an alpha channel for my starting. I want it to be a normal. So I should get and why that's 
you really don't see the brown that well. That's kind of weird. That's really, really strange. And I don't know why that's happening. Maybe it's bleaching out from the sun or something like that, the, the light that I'm using. Okay, so now let's try that again. And then that may be all the time we have today. But I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna copy the layer. <clears throat> and now I need to, the overall rectangular one, I need to use the mask so I can see through to the background. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, copy the current layer. So these, uh, this is all a matter of, you know, later on we can use um, node editor to do this, but it, it, it's, if, for those of you who are familiar with Photoshop, it's a way of getting accustomed to working with multiple layers and stacking them on top of, stacking them on top of one another to create a more complex um, system for yourself for creating more, really robust looking um, maps using images. So I'm gonna copy the current layer and I'm gonna paste and I just want to add to layers. And now this one <clears throat> I'm gonna take and I'm gonna load image one that's on top. And this one I want, the window mask. That's the one that I want. And that should cover up the other one by default. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. But now when I change it to from a normal layer to an alpha channel, it serves as kind of like a cookie cutter. So now when I change it to alpha, you can see through it, but, and I see through to that green, but I don't wanna see the green, I want it reversed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select reverse that. Now I do see the window frame and I see the window panes. Now I probably wanna change the color of <clears throat> the window um, itself that I'll do for the next time. And now what I can do is I can begin to create, for example, the transparencies that I need. So let me go ahead and let me take one of these layers. Let me take the alpha channel, okay? And I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go copy current layer. I'm gonna close it. And you'll see a whole list of channels that we have here that we can add. Well, one of them that I wanna do is I wanna add a transparency so that you can see through the window panes. So I'm gonna click here for a key for texture. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select paste. So, um, and I'm gonna say replace layers, current layer. It makes it transparent, but you can see that it makes it because it's the background, it makes the whole thing transparent. So now what I wanna do is I want window panes. That's the one that I wanna load so that it only affects the window pane area. So let's select um, the window panes JPEG. There we go. Now, the reason I copied and pasted is because um, I wanted to make sure that the, the settings that I've used for you know, texture axis, the um, automatic sizing and the placement um, and reset, make sure that it isn't um, uh, duplicated again and again um, or exact. Now, if I wanted this to be like this, to be able to see through, I could do that. But watch what happens when I select invert that mask. Now you can see the ball through it. You can see that the window mullions are casting a shadow onto the ball. Okay, so I'm taking it one step at a time. Now, let me go back to the window or the The, um, the window again, so that's for the window pane, that takes me there. Let me see if I can't put a wood texture behind here. So um, 
what I want to do is I want to click back here on the color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the window. Um, I'll just go ahead and I'll take the window mask. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to say current copy current layer and I'm going to paste. And I don't want to replace, I just want to add to the layers. Okay. And this one is going to be um, normal. So you'll see in a minute what I do, what's going on here. I'm going to go ahead and um, so let's take this one instead of alpha. I'm going to say that I want it to be normal. Okay. And that's what I have back here. And what I want to do again is I'm going to go ahead and I want to pick a different image. Now I picked ahead of time. I'm going to load image, a picture of um, a photograph that we got from our classic content of some wood. I have this wood J JPEG here. Okay, these wood panes. Let's see what we have here. Now, this is being affected, so I don't want it blue because it's inversed. Now, what I want it to be is normal. And now you can see that I have, but because the it's affecting the window pane again, I need to make sure that I have um, uh, another layer for that that uh, that masks out the area that I want to reveal. Um, I have the window panes taken care of, but I also need to make sure that I have, um, let's go ahead and copy this again. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this layer, current layer. I'm going to paste, and I want to go ahead and add two layers. Now this one is going to be an alpha so that I can mask um, and I just have the wood appear outside of the window frame itself. So I'm going to make, instead of normal, I want this to be alpha. Okay. Oh, that's why I'm having issues. Security settings are preventing whack. -on. Well, I don't care about that. That's why maybe it's security, my sec security settings on my computer that are getting messed up. So <clears throat> what I need to do now, so I notice that I have that set to alpha, but I have the wrong image. I want not the wood. I want the window JPEG, um, not the window, the window mask JPEG. There you go. So now I have the window frame and I have the, the wood set behind it, okay? And the next step will be to make the, the window panes a little ripply to make the, um, the frame stand out a little bit. And I think I'm going to go back in and I'm going to change that image, uh, the color of the frame. And then what we can also do while I'm here, we have enough time to do this, is I'm going to use a different, let's go ahead here, so that you can see that it will all match up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the box for the time being. Let's go ahead and move this over. I want the box itself. And I'm going to make sure that I have a texture for that. And it's going to, the, the mapping that I'm going to use for that, so that the, is, uh, the wood is applied to all the sides. Instead of a planar projection, I'm going to use uh, a cubic projection. Okay. And so I want cubic. There we go. And the image that I'm going to use is the one that I just used for wood. <clears throat> so now you can see that the wood, because I'm using the same map, the same scale, the same placement is matching up with the front. And probably what I'll do next, make sure that everything is saved properly before we end today, and I finish this up on Wednesday, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move um, 
let's let's do a couple of things. Um, I'm going to take from the camera. I'm going to hit T for move, and I want to move my camera up a little bit. So I'm going to move it up. I need to let's go ahead and take off VPR. Uh, let's just look at it window shaded. It will move much quicker. So if I go ahead and I move the camera up a little bit, there we go. So I want to see the top a little bit, and I'm going to hit Y for rotate. And I want there we go. So I could see all you know three you know three sides of of my cube. Now let's switch from solid shaded back to VPR. You can see that it's looking pretty decent now. Um, what I also want to do too, <clears throat> just to emphasize, you know, and get rid of that gradient background, I'm going to switch to, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to backdrop here. And under compositing, I just want, instead of the, the backdrop, uh, instead of using the gradient, I just want black for right now. And I'll add another light so that it looks a little bit nicer. Um, so that I can, you know, a fill light so I can see the right side a little bit. So I'm getting closer. Um, I apologize for the, the initial glitch, but it's coming along pretty well, you know, pretty much the way I had planned this to go. And again, this is all this is starting with just the basic cube and a couple of images that allow me to create something quite complex. What makes this, I think, work really well, um, and not in all instances, but, um, but in many, is that what I can do is that if I wanted to change the size of the window, if I wanted to multiply the window and have multiple windows, if I wanted to move the window to another side, I can do that. It's much more flexible and it takes less memory. If I were to actually alter the geometry <clears throat> of my cube and insert a window and window panes and turn the panes into glass and stuff for a close up shot, maybe that's what you have to do. But in some instances, if you can use more complex textures as a result, I think that's a smarter way to go. <laughs> As I said, you use less memory, um, you'll have greater flexibility um, because once you cut the holes in there for the window, once you extrude and change the geometry for your, for your window, it's permanent. It's really hard to make, to edit it. This will be much easier to edit in the, um, for us at a later time. So um, we're running it up against the 11 o'clock hour. So I will continue this on Wednesday and we'll finish it up. And I'm gonna get the, um, add a bump map to the frame. I'm also going to add a bump map to the window panes to make them look a little ripply. I'll also add a reflection map to the window panes. So it looks like it's, um, even though we have a black hole, so to speak for our environment, it will look like maybe um, an outdoor scene is being reflected into it and it will have a mirror-like finish. So all of those things are done solely with maps and that's it, okay? No alteration of geometry. I only have a six-sided polygon and <clears throat> the quads for the cube. And I put a, a sphere in there just so you could see that something was in there. Because if I didn't have it, you wouldn't see the transparency. It would just be a black hole in there, unless I put a light. I could put a light in there and that would be, you know, create the interior of a room. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this um, file in layout, okay? Make sure that I save all the images and then we'll um, continue this and we'll finish it up on, on Wednesday. Okie doke. Do you have any questions before we leave today? No? Okay, then I'm gonna say goodbye and I will see you guys um, hopefully on Wednesday so we can finish this up.
And this applies directly to what I'm looking for um, for the toy assignment. Take something very simple and add complexity to it. I mean, this would be a way of adding decals to the side of a, a plastic toy. It could be, you know, if you were gonna make a wooden toy, use images instead of the procedurals, you'll get a more realistic look, but you may have to um, get multiple images so that you get the different sides of the wood for the grain and the end grain and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, a little toy train, it could be, um, uh, a top, it could be um, jacks that have been done in the past. There's a whole variety of toys that um, you can do that use that are for your project that are very um, basic. But the goal is to not spend a lot of time on the modeling and to spend most of your time on the surfaces and the lighting to make it come to life. And then for your final assignment, we're going to that will be up to you. Um, you can put it all together, um, have more complex model if you want to do a robot or something, um, and put it in an interesting environment, you can do so. Um, I will also show you when we're done with this, um, how to use a different environment that's available to you under classic content to really showcase the object or the toy that you're making without a lot of muss or fuss. Okie doke. So that's it for today. Um, I will see you guys um, Wednesday. That's it. Bye bye.